Dismount the cable to isolate the various elements. Check the operation of the lever. Levers are simple, so problems with them are rare and usually the result of crash damage. Once the cable is released, you can inspect the operation of the brake. Does all the block hit the rim? Does the block hit the rim flat? Does the return spring, or springs, push both blocks sharply away from the rim? If the brake has two arms, V-brakes or cantilevers, do the springs push equally hard? Push each brake arm forwards and backwards to feel for looseness in the pivots. Inspect the cables. Are the inner cables shiny? Are the outer cables free from cracks or splits? Does the inner cable slide freely inside the outer cables? One end of the straddle wire is clamped, the other is held by a nipple. Push the brake arm holding the nipple end of the straddle wire against the rim. Pull the nipple in the other direction and unhook the cable through the slot. Open the brakes, remove the wheel if convenient, to examine the faces of the brake blocks that press on the rim in braking. Any stones or glass trapped there will damage the rim. Remove them. You may also find fragments of aluminium that have come from the rim. Remove them with tweezers or use a file to clean the faces. Open the brake and or remove the wheel. Take the block out of the brake if necessary and carve off any ridge with a knife. File the face smooth. The blocks may have a wear line. When the wear reaches the line or they start to look thin, replace them. Remove any retaining pins or screws that hold the shoes in the cartridge. Slide the shoe out of the open end of the cartridge. Replace the new shoes into the cartridges. Lubricate them with warm water if they are stiff. Refit screws or pins. Make sure when you remount them on the bike, the closed end points forwards. Otherwise, the shoes may fire out under heavy braking. Clean the threads on the inside of the bosses and the matching threads on the cantilever brake bolts. If they've been used before, acetone is the best substance to remove old thread lock. Handle acetone with care. It's volatile and flammable. The inside of the bosses need to be sticky. Clean the outside of the bosses. The outside of the bosses need to be slippery. Lightly grease the outside of the bosses. 
Don't get grease on the threads inside the bosses. Each arm has its own return spring. One end of the spring sticks out of the back of the arm and locates in a plate at the base of the boss. If the boss has three holes, make sure the springs on each side are located in matching holes. The top hole gives a sharper return action. The bottom hole makes the cantilever brakes easier to pull on, but in this position they return with less force. Mount the arms on the bosses with the springs in matching holes. Carefully apply a small amount of thread lock adhesive to the inside of the bosses and then screw in the bolts to lock the arms on the frame. The bolts need to be as tight as possible but still allow the arms to pivot. If the wheel is out of the bike, replace the wheel. Mount the blocks symmetrically so both hit the rims flat. Check for symmetry with your head on the bike's centerline. Some systems allow you to tow in the cantilever brake blocks. If the front of the shoe hits the rim slightly sooner than the back, the cantilever brakes may be less likely to squeal. Set up the main cantilever brake cable. Thread the yoke into the main cable and clamp it in a position where the straddle wire will rest in the yoke angled roughly 45 degrees above the horizontal. Hook the nipple end of the straddle cable into one arm. Run the straddle cable over the yoke and thread it under the cable clamp. Pull the straddle cable through while holding the cantilever brake arms in the ready position with the blocks close to the rim. Clamp the cable. One or both of the arms may have a small screw to adjust the preload on the spring. Screwing in the balance screw makes the arm it's in more active. Unscrewing the balance screw makes the spring work more gently. Adjust the screw or screws until both arms move the same amount. Cut and cap the ends of the main cable and the straddle cable, leaving plenty of room for adjustment.
Pull the front brake on. Push the bike forwards. The back wheel must lift off the ground. Pull the back brake on. Push the bike backwards. The front wheel must lift off the ground. When the brake lever is pulled as hard as possible, there must be at least another 20 millimeters of travel available. You can pull harder when you're frightened and the system must be able to cope with this. Lift the wheel and spin it gently. It must rotate freely and come to rest in a free position, not stuck against the brake. The outer cables need to be free from splits or cracks. The inner cables must not be frayed. Check for broken strands inside the lever and where the cable is clamped on the brake mechanism. The blocks need to be held firmly. Must hit the rim and not the tyre. There must be enough material left in the blocks to comfortably last the duration of the proposed trip. Rims also wear away when used as a braking surface. Some rims have a groove to help diagnose the point when they need replacing. 